All right, we're gonna get started here. We gave everybody a couple minutes to get in. My name is James with Noise Barriers. Today's webinar is going to be called How It's Made, Life of a Noise Barriers Barrier Wall Order from PO to Install. So I wanna welcome everybody who joined today. Again, my name is James with Noise Barriers. I'm assisted in the background by Becca, our marketing specialist. She's gonna be helping me out running the webinar today. And without further ado, let's get started. So as you may or may not know, our barrier wall product line is called QuietLine. Today, we're gonna to be talking about our standard VStack barrier wall system. As you may or may not know, we do have quite a few different uh, barrier wall systems, the VStack, the SL, the SLR, and a concealer. But for the sake of simplicity, today we're gonna to stick with our bread and butter VStack barrier panel. So we are going to talk about all different things today. I think it's important to note that our typical webinars are about products uh, like a sliding door, a bifolding door, vertical lifting doors. But today we're going to talk about more of a process and an order flow and how it affects noise barriers in our customers from internal to external. Um, this life cycle, the barrier wall will touch on order intake all the way through the on-site installation. At the very end, number six, we will watch a video from our website regarding the on-site installation of a barrier wall system. With that being said, we will also cover this strictly from order agreement and purchase order. So we won't be talking about how noise barriers goes to market in terms of the spec work, uh, reps and end users. Um, we're really gonna take this from just post quoting um, and. PO issuance onward. So the purchase order. Ideally, a purchase order references our noise barriers quote number. Um, as you know, we do lots of quoting and there might be multiple revisions on an order. So we're going to take the most recent quote number, uh, attach that onto the purchase order, and ideally all of the materials are split out into individual line items. This helps us with internal billings. Um, if you have a large barrier wall, there might be uh, just panels, there might be structural steel, um, there might be kickers and additional bracing, there might even be installation, freight, taxes. It's helpful to split those items out if possible for us so that when we build deposits or as we're doing progress payments, we can make sure that we're billing the correct amount of the job and not just the job in totality. Um, so the cleaner the PO, really the cleaner we can help uh, bill and keep things organized on our side. If possible, and if your salesman does provide you a freight quote, it's great to put that estimated range on the PO. One, it keeps us in line and hopefully we can keep our agreement and stay in that range, but also as a good placeholder for you so that when it does come time, there isn't any um, missed information or confusion regarding who's covering the freight, how is it billed, et cetera. The other thing we're really pushing within the last few months is to have the ship to address provided at time of purchase order. I completely understand and most of our sales reps know that information isn't always provided at the time of order, but if you have it and you're able to provide it, it does help us again down the road when products ready to ship, we don't have to nag you for what's the ship to location, where is this going, um, how does it need to be shipped. The, the more information we can get upfront, the better. Our flow for how an order goes through might seem a little messy at first glance. You might have seen this document on the door webinar from door order to shipment. Uh, that was last month's webinar series hosted by John. This order flow is nearly identical, but it's quite simple once you get moving. We're gonna start here in this gray box, which is a new order is received. Everything before that is the request for quote, spec, review, internal quoting process. This gray box is the start of purchase order received. Noise Barriers receives a purchase order. We immediately enter it into our CRM tool and mark and acknowledge the order. You'll probably see an email from Sherry, who is order intake uh, expert. She will mark it as a new order, assign it a job number and send an acknowledgement email and usually sends over any tax information like our W-9, terms and conditions, and things like that. 
We make an internal folder electronically now with that holds our PO, our budget, and our quote. This is where all of our information regarding the project, if there was any drawing sent, wall schedules, door details, elevations, you name it, it's supplied here and kept inside this folder. Once that folder is made, it's pushed into an internal handoff meeting. This meeting typically involves the salesman who sold the project, the project manager who's gonna run it, and the designer who's going to draft it. Those three individuals get together and review all of the scopes, timelines, expectations of that barrier wall project, or any project for that matter. Once the project manager has an understanding of the scope, an email is sent to the customer letting them know that, hey, I'm your project manager. If you need anything, we're here for you. You know, drawings can be expected in uh, XYZ number of days. We set up the order in our project management software so we can track it. And we split the order within our shop manager into those multiple different breaks that we talked about in the PO. We split those orders in our shop manager tool as well. We call those suborders. So for a barrier wall, we would split the panels into a suborder, structural steel into a suborder, install if we have it onto a suborder, and um, maybe freight too. But the idea being that we want all those items to be able to move and flow at their own pace throughout our shop and not be one clunky large barrier wall dollar amount, but have multiple smaller chunks that we can move. So if materials need to be ordered sooner, we can procure them sooner. If things need to be hot dip galvanized, we can move orders into the hot dip galvanizer. Once we split the orders out and our designer begins working on the drawings, create a full submittal package. The submittal package, as you, as you all probably know, likely is gonna be revised after a revision. We hope it gets approved on the first one. If that's not the case, um, we'll continue to revise and resubmit and work out all the kinks and questions the end user and noise beers has until a design is agreed upon. And at that time, we receive approval. Once approval to proceed, we do the same sort of process. We now are making, instead of a submittal set of drawings, we are gonna make a release set of drawings. So we're gonna build an entire set of drawings with bill of materials, bill sheets, IPLs or individual parts lists and release docs. We're gonna internally check it and externally check it with a peer. And then we're gonna send it to our shop for fabrication. They'll then review the package. They'll assign a promise date to the customer. And then we'll release, build, ship, and install the product. Now these blocks are small, um, but there is a lot that goes into each one of these little orange or blue or gray boxes. So when I talk about it very quickly, it's a lot more in-depth and complicated than this uh, map uh, shows, but I'm gonna hopefully dive in and answer some of your larger questions and give you a high level overview of what all of those process steps look like through our shop today. So as I mentioned, we're gonna send a full submittal package. What that package will look like is on a barrier wall job, depending on the size, uh, is maybe a 10 page document that I'll show you up in the top right corner of the first page, all of the specific notes regarding the order. That has to do with what type of panel you're ordering, what type of material will it be, any fill specifications, powder coat specifications, scope regarding structural steel, is it by noise barriers or is it by others? As well as any details or drawings we are provided, we'll incorporate those chillers, air conditioners, fans, pumps, we'll try and incorporate as much detail based on the site into our drawings as possible. So here you can see an order. Uh, this is for Huff Company. It's a V-stack wall, looks to be around a chiller. So typically the plan view is on page one, and then the rest of the pages will show elevations and details. Now it's critical in our system to note that this project is called OFA at this point, which means out for approval. This is what we call any job that Noise Beers has completed submittals on and has been handed over to our customer for approval. We call that out for approval. So you'll often, often hear us say, oh, this job is still OFA, or I'm trying to convert some of our OFA orders 
that means we're trying to churn up some of these jobs that are out with our customers and see if anything can get approved and brought back into our shop. As I mentioned on the supplemental pages, you can see we have an elevation view um, here in elevation A. We've got some section views as well as a few different details showing panel on top of panel, uh, panel into the column at the end of a stretch, um, and even panel to panel at a column. So we're gonna show as much detail as we can, and if there's any specific instances in the drawing, we'll make sure to note them either on their own page or in the detail section. You'll also see notes regarding um, materials uh, by others, obviously this chiller is by others, but you can see there's an existing wall on site here in the floor here, the structural beams running horizontal or by others. We'll make sure to call out our scope versus other scope. This is really the true game of telephone that you hear about. This is converting what an architect told a, uh, a bidding company or a GC what they wanted. The GC's documents are converted um, and the noise barrier sales rep interprets what they think the customer wants. We interpret that and send it to our designers who interpret what they think the noise barrier sales rep sold. And then those drawings are sent to the customer. So the better the communication and the quoting and the internal processes, the more precise um, and less revisions we can send on a drawing. So this, this is really where the rubber hits the road and we see how close what we sold is to what we drew. And the, the, the hope is always, always, always that it's as few revisions as possible and it's exactly what the customer needs on the first try. So we'll assume everything on this order went exactly as planned and the customer approved it on the first revision. So we are going to really, uh, receive an approval. When those drawings and our submittals are signed and we receive an email from our customer stating this barrier wall project is approved, we start our release for production. This release for production includes the compilation of, as I stated, a bill of materials, all of the build sheets, install drawings, and any sort of miscellaneous items you could think of. So we supply all of these documents and a cover sheet, a cover sheet, excuse me, called the shop release. So you'll see on this shop release, it states the number, the name, customer, project type, material type, if there's any special notes, build drawings and document numbers, and there's all sorts of different special remarks and additional instructions here where we can say, uh, you know, call special attention to these corner columns, you know, very custom. We can say, make sure to 100% QC inspect these components. We can say customer pickup, uh, fire rated panels, might include some pre-assembly. This is where we convey any of that customer related information to our shops so that we don't miss anything during the fabrication process. While we are working on this release document, which typically today's circumstances running at about eight to 10 business days to fabricate this whole fact, a whole package, we call the job, oops, excuse me, TBR, to be released. That is what we designate as our designer is working on the release, getting it ready to be sent to the shop is to be released TBR. Once the job is completed, the release package that is, is sent to the shop, we send it into production. Now that shop review packet is reviewed internally by one of our designers and a designer peer, one of their peers that work next to them. They swap and check each other's work. And then it's also sent to our shop and someone within the shop checks our work to make sure that there's no incorrect dimensions or missing information. The project uh, is set in queue and they have daily production meetings and they look ahead on orders. And they look ahead and they look at our shop release and see this is 150 panels, 25 columns. Looks like the customer's desired ship date is end of October. That looks like we have capacity. Let's plan it for that date. And that occurs as soon as possible. Um, and we call that being released to the shop. The release to the shop means that our shop can provide a promised ship date to the customer, or a tentative promised ship date saying, I know you want it end of October. I can provide it end of October. And again, this is all on a first come, first serve basis. Now, once we have a date, and the shops review the package and all the information's been dispersed throughout the shop, we start fabrication. 
For a barrier panel, like many other, other products, it starts in the sheet metal department. So we stock lots of material. You can see in the far top left-hand corner is a picture of some racking. This is the same picture we used for the door webinar last month. It shows our typical steel rack. It has four by eight sheet of galvanized, galvanile, steel, stainless steel, uh, aluminum, and pretty much standard four by eight, maybe four by 10 foot sheets. Now for the V stacks, we also stock the roll formed male V stack and female V stack channel. You can see that in the uh, rightmost picture or in the center of your screen there. That is a male V stack channel that would be uh, welded onto the top of a V stack panel. So the idea being you have a male piece on the top of the uh, panel and a female piece at the bottom of the panel. So as you stack the panels on top of each other, they interlock and nest with each other. So we do roll form those materials and keep those on hand, but anything that we don't have stocked, we do custom order. The idea being we're trying to eliminate as much of a lead time on our materials as possible. Those raw materials will be uh, selected and uh, uh, put on a pallet, carted over or fork trucked over to our Amada brake press. If there's any sort of penetration required, we will punch that penetration now, whether it's for um, some piping or uh, a fan um, or ducting or electrical or air, any sort of penetrations as required, we can punch out on the Amada now. Also, if there is a door cutout on that barrier wall, I'll scroll back up just so you can see it. On this barrier wall here, you can see there was a door in the barrier wall. So these would have been punched in the shop prior to shipment. As you can see, this panel up here is actually a one piece panel and the door just is cut out around it. So we would do all that on our Amada. We then push them over and we shear them to length if needed. So again, if it's not a standard eight foot, 10 foot, 12, 14 or 16 foot panel, then we would shear it down to the correct length or a custom length if required. Our panels are then assembled using those materials right there, a male and female V-stack channel, which can be purchased in four inch or five inch depths, depending on wind loading and um, site requirements, a perforated internal sheet, a solid external sheet, and two end caps on either side of the panel to keep the fill in. All those materials are gonna be stacked up as each panel is welded and formed into a panel, they're gonna be stacked on pallets and separated with two by fours, as you can see there, and they're gonna be ready to head to the powder coating. What you can see, uh, two things I wanna note on this picture. One, you'll notice that yellow square on each of the panels, that is a cutout that we put on each side of a panel so that they can fit the lifting hooks into the panel during on-site installation. You'll notice we don't wanna, uh, put in threaded holes so that we can put eye bolts through so that the job site can feed a hook through an eye bolt, but then they got to remove the eye bolt on each bay. It turns into a big mess. So what we've opted um, a long, long time ago to do is to just cut this notch in the top of the panels. That lets us lift right at the panel and there's no fasteners involved with on-site installation. The other thing I want to note is down at the bottom left, you can see a yellow piece of Masking tape, we do mark the pallets with the job number, job name, and work order so that we know exactly what's on there, where it's headed, and what it needs to do in the process next. So all those raw panels are then fork trucked over to our powder coat line. When we receive them at the powder coat line, we are going to do a clean and prep. So we've had some problems in the past and we've resolved them by doing a three-stage wash and scrub on all of our exterior barrier wall panels. So that includes spraying them with some green paint prep. We spray them down, we scrub them with scratch bright pads, we remove any sort of grease, grit, contaminants, anything you could imagine, the whole entire panel is getting scrubbed down. We then wipe it dry, do a QC check to ensure everything's been removed. If that rag returns any sort of debris or dust or dirt. The panel's removed from the line and set over for a second cleaning. So we don't let anything go through the paint line that would potentially cause the paint to not adhere. You can see right here, this is an example, that's what those pads look like. They hang it up on the line first, 
and they hang it using those lifting pockets up in the top right corner there. And there's another one on the top left. And then they can scrub down the panel on both sides. After that scrub and cleaning is completed, the panels are ready for the powder coat paint. Typically, we're spraying barrier panels in our gray primer color. We do do the custom RAL colors if required, but the gray is actually um, very pleasing out in the field in that dark gray color. Um, it's a little bit cheaper than a custom powder coat color, and for those exterior uses, um, it really goes well up on a high rooftop or in a low visibility area. We're using powder coat paint. So as you may have heard in the door presentation, the way powder coat works is a, um, I believe it's electrically charged with um, a positive charge and the material is charged with a negative. So as the powder is sprayed onto the material, they bond with each other and attract. We then send that powder coated panel through the oven, which bakes the material onto the metal and it forms um, sort of a, a, a unified coat. Um, and it's actually adhered into the uh, small, uh, I guess you would call it into the, the steel receives the powder coat, so to say, and they're bonded to each other. Um, and that's how we ensure that there's no flaking. And it's critical that that panel's clean before because that, that really what allows the powder coat to have such a great bond to the metal. Once materials are off the line, they're ready to be created. This is now a good time to bring up structural steel. I don't think it deserved an entire presentation, but I did want you all to see we are capable of fabricating structural steel on any of our barrier jobs. Um, depending on the size and length of the material, we would do it internally in North Aurora at our facility. We do have a structural steel department as chop saws, welders, um, heavy jib cranes, et cetera, to move this around. If it does get to be too large of a size, we might have some of it outsourced. And then on any exterior barrier product, we have the material, the columns and angles, hot dip galvanized, and then brought back to powder coat. Again, depending on weight, we'll do that powder coating in-house. If it is too heavy of a column, then we'll send it out to a third party powder coater. You can see in the top left there, that's an example of the just the pure structural steel layout of a barrier wall around a uh, some sort of mechanical unit. Then on the bottom left, you have the raw steel and on the right, the powder coated steel. If Noise Bears is responsible for the structural steel, um, we can offer PE stamping and calculations if required. So we'll assume now that all of our materials are back in our shop. We've got our columns back from the powder coater. We've got all of our panels. It's time to crate everything. So we will custom make every crate to fit the panels. So if you have a 11 foot panel, we'll probably put in a 12 foot crate. It'll be four sided with an extremely sturdy base. We use four foot, uh, excuse me, four inch by four inch uh, wood beams on the pallets on the floor. It's not just your typical pallet, it's a custom made heavy duty pallet. And on barrier panels, we try and get eight into a crate. Again, depending on the thickness and sizes, it might run a little less than that, but we're shooting for eight per crate. When everything's crated and shipped, um, we'll hopefully have already received your shipping letter, which your project manager will have sent. It'll have asked you uh, for a truck style, if there's any tracking requirements, if there's a dock door, a crane, fork truck on site, address, uh, who's providing the installation. This document tells us everything we know to set up the freight for our load. So the sooner we have this, the more ahead of time we are in getting it scheduled and we can get the best rate possible. Um, so the sooner this can get back, the sooner the better. Um, if the load is by others and the freight is being handled by the customer, then we can send weights and dimensions of the loads to the customer so that the customer can coordinate the pickup and delivery of the materials. So with that being said, that is a noise barriers, barrier wall order from start to finish. This last slide here is a video. Becca is going to help me pull the video up. Um, but before then, I want to thank everybody for your time today. I see from the attendance list, we have lots of reps and customers on. I want to thank everybody for joining. Um, if you need anything, do not hesitate to email me. My email will be at the end of the slides, or you can call our phone number and get a hold of me. My name is James. Thank you so much today. Um, 
what you're going to see here is a VStack barrier wall installation video. I think it's just under two minutes long, um, but it'll show you some great on-site visualizations of what that will look like while a barrier is being installed. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Introducing QuietLine VStack Barrier Walls by Noise Barriers. An easier, safer way to install noise barrier walls. Please review the installation packet in the crate and consult the install documentation for a list of tools needed. Columns are set in place and fastened to existing or precast anchor bolts. When the VStack crate arrives at the job site, it is placed on level ground and braced so it won't tip over as load becomes unbalanced. Before removing the first panel, clamp the remaining panels together to prevent them from falling over. The VStack panels feature built-in slots for easy lifting and are designed to be lifted directly out of the crate. While competing systems require two workers to lift, temporarily support, and install straps for lifting, the panel is lifted and guided between the columns coming to rest on the base plate. The hooks are then simply removed to complete the panel installation. Other systems require two workers to perform the tedious and slow process of temporarily supporting, unstrapping, and then placing panels. VStack installation requires no fasteners. There is no time wasted supporting, strapping, and unstrapping panels. Simply unhook and stack. To build better, smarter noise barrier walls, visit us online at noisebarriers.com.